MoveIt Central is used to automate file transfers between different systems on your internal LAN as well as the, the internet and your external business partners. In this demo, we'll take a look at how to configure MoveIt Central for a traditional business-to-business -business file transfer and exchange of data. When you lo first log on to the MoveIt Central admin GUI, you're taken to the host tab. The host tab is where, as an administrator, you define the endpoints or the servers that MoveIt Central must connect to in order to push files to or pull files from those various endpoints. For our example, we'll be using two hosts. The first is just the local file system. So the local file system can be used as a source or a destination for a MoveIt Central task. If you take a look at some of the settings here, we won't go into these in too much depth, but there are configuration options to retry transfers if they fail for whatever reason, um, to be able to have file transfers kicked off on an event-driven basis by using file notification, um, even makes it simple to upload files with a temporary name first and then rename it after the file transfer has been successful. For this example, assume you are using MoveIt deployed on-prem in your DMZ, but this example applies equally to those with cloud requirements. And so you can see here how you would define a connection to MoveIt DMZ. MoveIt Central connects to MoveIt DMZ over HTTPS, so it's a very firewall-friendly connection. It doesn't require any additional ports to be opened up. You would provide MoveIt Central with a username and password that should be used to authenticate to the MoveIt DMZ server. Uh, once again, the Use File Notification option is available on MoveIt DMZ hosts to kick off those file transfers on an event-driven basis, and of course, being able to specify retries in order to retry a transfer after a short timeout period if a transfer fails for whatever reason. So once you have your host defined, then the next step is to actually define the tasks. So tasks are where you really get into defining the various steps and the pushes and pulls that you want to have occurred on a schedule or event-driven basis. The first example we'll look at is a task that is going to automatically pull files that our partner has uploaded to Move It DMZ and subsequently save them to various internal file system locations. So you can see the summary. We'll skip over the schedule and come back to that. But if we take a look at the download step, so here we're referencing the host definitions that we defined on the previous host tab. So for the source for this task, we're going to pull files from Move It DMZ. You can click on Browse and browse right to the folder structure. No need to copy and paste folder paths from your command line client. You can just browse right to that host. You can specify, for example, which file masks you want the task to pull. In this case, we're just grabbing all files, star dot star, but you can certainly build uh, whatever file mask suits your needs. There's options if you need to recurse and include entire folder trees to include subdirectories. After successfully transferring files, Move It Central can go back and either delete the originals, as in this case, or rename it, or perhaps do nothing if the file should still remain out on that source server. So that's the source where Move It Central will pull files from for this task. Now, the next step would be a destination. So this is the first destination for this task. And this is a real simple example. It's just going to take any files that were downloaded from Move It DMZ and save them out to a folder out on the local C drive. So it's just going to save them out to that local folder. This could just as easily be a network share or could just as easily be FTPing them up to the mainframe. It's really irrelevant where the files came from, you can still send it to any destination host. In this case, we're using some of the macros that MoveIt Central makes available to administrators. Uh, for example, we're renaming this file on the fly with the current year, month, day, hour, minute, second. 
Um, so being able to specify a, a timestamp as part of the name, and, and there's you know a whole list of macros that can be utilized to rename files, as well as send email notifications. Now this task has multiple destinations, so we're using the, the second destination as a way to archive files. So this way, any files that this task processes will automatically be archived to this archive destination. So pretty much the same as the first destination, just a different folder path. And in this case, we're actually using macros as part of the folder path. So with the create directories if necessary option specified, this destination will go ahead and create a folder with the current year, month, and day as the folder name if that folder does not ar already exist, and even archiving these by the original user that uploaded the files to Move It DMZ. Uh, so making good use of those macros that are available. Tasks can also be configured with one or more next actions, essentially a step to take upon either the task or each individual file completing with either a success, failure, or no action in the case where you want to capture an event when the task runs but there were no files available to transfer. Um, so in this case, we're, we're using the next action on failure of the task so that we can alert an administrator to the, to the fact that this task failed and so that we don't have to provide the uh, same information on each and every one of these next actions that we define, we're, we're leveraging the global parameters. So there's the ability to specify global parameters and then reference them later on, in, in this case from a, from a next action email. And so that this task will then run on a scheduled basis, we have a schedule applied to the task. This task is gonna run every Monday through Friday when files arrive, but only between certain hours. So it won't just run flat out all the time, it will only run during certain specified hours. So at this point, we can go ahead and run our task. And then the status tab is where you can go in and monitor the status of what tasks are, are currently running on the system. Uh, now, Move It Central is multi-threaded, so you can have multiple tasks running simultaneously. That way, your file transfer jobs that are possibly transferring gigabytes worth of data don't hold up all of your other tasks that maybe just have to go out and, and transfer a uh, few small files. So this gives you a view into what is currently running on the system. And then to get more of a historical perspective, uh, you can, from many places, right-click on a task and select View Task Runs. And this will bring up Move It Central's report screen. So this report screen is where you can filter and query the audit records that Move It Central records each and every time a task runs. Um, so right now we're filtered down to this particular task. We can see every time that this task has ran, as well as whether it succeeded or failed. And then we can double click on uh, any one of those task runs to get the full details about what this task did when it ran. So you'll see every file that's been downloaded, processed, uploaded, deleted. And then for even more detail, you can double click on an individual file transfer record to get the specific details about that particular file and where that file came from, how long it took to pull down that file, where that file was sent to, that type of information. So then just going back to the tasks tab, other tasks are going to be set up in a very similar fashion. Here we have a corresponding task for this particular partner for outgoing files. So instead of pulling files that are coming in from DMZ, instead we're looking for files in a particular folder on the local file system. We're going to put those files out to the Move It DMZ server for pickup. Uh, we're also going to archive them. And one thing that is different on this task is before we upload the files, we're going to PGP encrypt them. So this is taking advantage of Move It Central's ability to run custom scripts or processes against files while Central has them cached locally. So this is using the uh, built-in PGP encrypt module to encrypt that file. 
Uh, you can specify the you know information required. In this case, the particular recipient key. You know which public PGP key should be used in order to encrypt this file. And all those keys are managed right from within the GUI as well. So if we go up here and you know bring up our PGP key ring, you can see both private keys that you as as the, the Move It Central administrator might create to provide, you know, to partners sending you files. And then also you can import your trading partners' public keys that, that you would use to encrypt files you send to them. The Scripts tab is where you manage the various built-in as well as custom scripts that Move It Central can invoke as a process as part of a task. Some of the built-in scripts available you see here Probably the most popular one is Command Line App. This is a built-in script that can be used to call any external command or custom program and run that against the files while Move It Central has them cached locally. Some of the other built-in scripts of interest, the ability to convert carriage return line feeds to line feeds or vice versa, being able to get or put files from SharePoint zipping, unzipping, and of course the PGP encryption and decryption scripts. The debug log tab is where an administrator can go to get more detailed diagnostic information about what tasks are currently running and you know, what is happening at each step along the way. Um, so typically the debug log, it, the, the debug level is set relatively low so that the output is not overly verbose. However, if an administrator is trying to troubleshoot a particular task, the administrator can filter this view, run the task, and then see detailed um, debug output specifically for the task that they are troubleshooting. 